Welcome to Montru. For those who know Svanne Warbusch, J.C. Ehrlich Ryder or Douglas Engelbart, this may be familiar, but for others, Montru is an unusual approach in creating and interacting with information systems. It has three components. The first is the ultimate knowledge language, MDBC. The second is DUST, a runtime that can understand and execute anything described in MDBC. The third is Montru, an environment you can interact with any information system in DUST. The next few minutes will not be enough to explain it, but you will see why I created this channel and if you are interested in it or not. If you are in IT, you must know some form of this cartoon quite well. IT professionals are smart people who really want to solve these problems, yet they seem to come back on us in all projects. A rational explanation to the situation can be that we overlook a fundamental root cause and don't ask the right questions. My experience shows the possible root cause that we write texts, plans and source codes to create information systems. From the developer's perspective, each line can be wrong, either by error in typing or understanding. More code may contain more typos, more coders and libraries introduce more misunderstandings. But this is only the surface. As an architect, I know that there are lots of things that we only learn while making the system. The more code we have written already makes it less possible that we can adapt to the new knowledge. So the system we finally deploy is already obsolete. As analyst, I see that in the long run, the environment will also change. Not only the requirements, but the infrastructure, the platforms and tools we use to build the system. This means the value of each line of code tends to zero over time. It is bad in the short, mid and long term. No tool that helps writing, generates or checks source codes, compiles and employs them, does or can address this problem. I wanted a tool that helps me creating and maintaining an information system above the always changing environment and eroding tools. I could not find it, so I decided to make it. But an IT professional must answer the three questions before launching any project. Why, what and how? Why does it not exist yet? And why do I have a chance to make it now? What is the abstract structure of the solution? And how can I make and use it? I can't tell you exactly what makes Montreux different right now, but can show you what I mean by asking better questions. I will provide references to the background, including its GitHub project. By the way, the name Montreux means show it in Esperanto for a good reason. So, let me show you the way to Montreux. Why do we build information systems? because they provide a reliable and dynamic environment to store and interact with our knowledge about another system. This is true in simple games, a hospital or country, or the global economy. They store gigantic amounts of data, do perfect calculations so fast that would be impossible for any human individual or teams. Of course, this is obvious, but the question is, exactly, what is knowledge? First, you must know the terminology to understand, think and talk about a subject. Meanings of specific nouns and verbs, like the meaning of the signs on an IKEA instruction sheet. This is the meta layer. Then you can use these nouns and verbs to describe a real system by listing terms and connections. So you can compare the content of a box with an actual assembly instruction still in IKEA. This is data. To make it dynamic, you now describe actions as they change the status of the system, how you get your IKEA table. This is PROTS, a process. Each and every programming language, development and design tool supports building meta by translating our data objects to a language, structures, classes, database tables, XML elements, and so on. They allow us storing such objects in files or memory and changing them using their instructions. Okay, we all know this. Where's the problem? I have already told you. We solve exactly the same three tasks of creating meta, data and prods with separate tools for a single target system.
The tones swallow and distort our understanding, and we must keep them in sync over time. Of course, we have tools that generate skeletons for multiple environments, but we change the generated texts when we solve local problems. Our knowledge freezes into texts and configurations of tools and becomes fragile over time. At a certain point, even small changes come with unexpected side effects, and you can't fix this problem by throwing more developers at it. The fundamental error here is overlooking that knowledge is essentially shared and dynamic. Your system communicates with its environment, and this interaction is general, regardless of the tool that you use. The same user interface and services, the same data structures, the same report templates, the same communication among nodes. This is why you can use a generic script or template engine in an environment that provides reflection. Com, the fourth core module of knowledge representation, is responsible for this task. And finally, our knowledge changes over time including the meta layer, the language you have already used to describe the elements of your system. That hurts. The question is how reliably you can predict, find and fix the side effects. If that knowledge is buried under tons of manually edited text files, you are lost. But any information system is a dynamic network of meta, data, prots and com elements. So you don't have to flatten this network, replicate and squeeze into multiple environments. You can browse and change the structures of your live and running system. You can improve the language if you find an easier way to describe an existing situation or process. Or from the other end, you can start with a working prototype on day one and continuously improve the, to the final version in the same environment. This approach fundamentally changes building information systems. <laughs> I know it for sure. I wouldn't be able to create Dust or Montreux without their previous versions. So what is programming? <laughs> of course, we know that very well. We talk about in platforms, programming languages, libraries, on higher level, development environments, deployment tools, containers, and so on. But as a designer or a future user of any system, I don't care about them. I only want to create my structures to describe my data, build my logic and interfaces to work with it. And I can do all of that by using the Meta, Data, Prots and Com or the MDPC language. What we call today programming is only translation. Make a machine behave according to those abstract requirements. This is a very strong statement. If you really know what you are doing, programming is a perfect translation, does not add or change anything in a system, a mindless, repetitive task that should be completely automated to exclude human error. Where is the value in programming then? The real task is eliminating false assumptions by augmented thinking. You use tools to refine vague ideas about a system to a precise description and vague ideas about the runtime and libraries to ex exact knowledge to make them do what you want. See writing, for example. Text is not just funny marks on a surface, but knowledge others somewhere once had in their minds. Writing is not only making those marks, but refine that knowledge to the level those marks can hold. Count the sheep, measure a distance, describe a phenomenon. Writing breaks the boundary of distance and time, brings your knowledge to other places, but it must work alone, because you will not be there to explain what you meant. However, while writing is serial and final, information systems allow continuous interaction among many individually active members, people and computer services in a shared virtual space, unless it is crippled by text-oriented tools. What is needed to support this vision of building and interacting with information systems? Three elements. First, the language of languages. The precise and usable elements of meta, data, prots and com that I can use to describe anything. And this is just another information system. So you see the ultimate recursion. 
the stored language information system containing the language to store any language. This is like the idea of assigning symbols to the sounds we make when talking instead of to the things we talk about. In this way, you can write anything you can say with the minimal number of symbols. The second element is dust, the absolute minimal kernel that can understand any structure described in meta, store and manage the network of entities given in data, execute the four fundamental control structures of PROTS and serialize, read and write any network to and from a stream by COM services. It also contains a thin API in a programming language through which a code can interact with any information in Dust and through which Dust can use anything written in that language, so Dust can run in that environment. The code size must be minimal because it changes rapidly as I understand and improve the MDPC language and later this must be ported or generated in any programming languages. The third element is Montru, a system that allows a person to manage any information in Dust in a convenient way, search the network for entities, show all information in any entity, browse their connections and change anything including the description of any existing entity. Montru, therefore, is an online refactoring and editing environment, or in other words, a real tool for thinking. It must use Dust externally, just like any other Dust application. Now we turn to how these concepts can appear in actual source codes or in a working environment. I'm afraid that this part goes far out of the comfort zone. A programmer today must know a portion of a colorful map of technologies, each of which changes every month. The common sense says that you must learn new things all the time to keep in sync with the state of the art. But when asking questions like what programming is, how it is related to knowledge and intelligence, you must forget about everything you use and focus on the absolute fundamentals. The motto of this implementation comes from a forgotten Luddite, Neil Postman. Technology giveth and technology taketh away. Measure everything you use and give a better solution if the price is too high. For example, if you use constructs of a programming language, classes, structures, whatever, to express the meta information, you will have to write code again to access them, compile and deploy when the meta information changes. You will not see when the data is read or written unless you make everything private and write even more pointless code of getters and setters. If you want to make it modular, you must also add listener management to each field, and so on. The code you see here has absolutely no meaning related to the system you write. They only exist to get back some control over your data for each variable. In Dust, Meta is not translated to language constructs. The runtime handles all access. The code is very complex compared to the natural representation. However, you get automatic access on change notification, which allows such a simple code for a label displaying any data on screen to update the text immediately. You can change the structure of existing object in the running system. You get ultimate access control, automatic property pages, serialization, and many other features without coding. In a very similar way, it is very hard to throw out the natural language-based support for functions, interfaces, inheritance, and introduce a configuration-based service layer instead. However, if you realize that you want the same thing in every running environment, it is more natural than writing the same ideas in all these environments in multiple syntaxes. The underlying code is indeed complicated, but you get the same runtime flexibility, total access control, logging, even macro recording and so on, for any function you will ever write automatically without coding. Let's see how it works by two examples. I have created two live demos using the actual version of Montreux environment. The first shows the use of entity concept in managing data and sending messages to entities. The second is kind of live demonstration of how Montreux can be used to think about the system.
You can find the GitHub link in the description, but note that this is my personal, currently less than 40 days old version of Dust Mod True. Right now there is no documentation, you must press buttons to see anything in the left panel and so on. I don't even give details because everything will change. I plan to continuously improve this project and make short videos as I go. Can you use this project? Well, I don't recommend that in serious tasks right now. As I said, this is an experimental development. I select promising features for Montreux, implement them to realize what they need from Dust and how they change the MDBC language, do the changes, re-implement and extend the features again. However, I recommend giving a try and use the interface for augmented thinking about anything. <laughs> Sorry you can't even save yet, I need to clean up the relationship with yet undefined layers, the unit and the application term in the next weeks. What projects can build on Montreux when it reaches production level? Of course I have no power to stop anyone using it, neither want to set limitations to introduce smart explanations. I'd rather go the other way and back to the roots. Please. Read Vannevar Bush, J.C. Leclider, and Douglas Engelbart. Understand why they built the vision that became distorted to what we call today the age of informatics, and why Douglas Engelbart says the real revolution has not yet started. In short, please use Montreux to solve real problems instead of making them or diverting resources to solving artificial problems. Thank you for your time.